Hello. Uh, the investors may remember I've been here before, right? The first meeting. So I'm here again, but with a different hat. So uh, it says Bjorn Christensen, Angel Challenge. I'm not a guest speaker, I'm part of the team now. Uh, I've been a part-time employee of Angel Challenge since February, I think. Uh, part of the operations team, and uh, my boss is sitting right there, actually. So if anything goes wrong, talk to her. So, some important parts of the investment process. Startups must sell themselves. You're basically here to sell yourself and your company and your idea and to sign a deal that will hopefully be an investment while the investors are on the buyer's side. So, when you're on the buyer's side, you should probably think like a buyer, right? A bit of skepticism, use your uh, experience, uh, use your network, uh, try to find out what this is really. And that's what part of this program is about, an important part of the program. It's important to get excited, but it's also important to apply some discipline and process into the investment you're going to make. And to both parties, share, because this is about sharing too. It's not about, aha, I have a good idea, don't tell anyone until I have something. And there are no NDAs going, or not a lot of NDAs going around here. Uh, in my other job in Alliance Venture, we normally don't ever sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreements. We want to be open, we want to share things uh, amongst us, help each other. Investors are here to help each other and the startups. Startups are also here to help each other and by that, helping yourself, hopefully. But also criticize, suggest, and absolutely, both parties, we want investments <coughs> to happen in week 10. And trust me, and uh, you will, if you dump into a demo day while traveling to the US or any other places, all of a sudden you, you join, a, or, or here, the Startup Lab demo day or the factory demo day, 500 startups or Y Combinator in the US, uh, you will recognize this, you will you feel at home. And this is when you say, yes, Sarah, they will. Nod, thank you. <laughs> because it's kind of the same thing. You will know the terminology, you will know the processes, you will know what happened up there on the stage uh, when the companies pitch. And you will be able to communicate with investors there and then, and be a part of the community, which is may be the overall goal of the whole Angel Challenge program. The only difference now, one of the differences between 500 startups and Y Combinator and Angel Challenge is that they don't have this common path of two investors and startups, startups and investors. Okay, that helps? Okay. Good. Then how to get there? The startups has already presented their pitch. It was four minutes, wasn't it? Uh, three minutes is not uncommon. Six minutes is a long kind of pitch. People uh, use that too. Uh, but a pitch is more an appetizer. Uh, that's where the startup will try to and hopefully reach interest with the investors. It's not a presentation on which a investor group or an investor can make a decision and sign something. Think about buying again. Uh, here, the pitch will be developed into a presentation, an investor deck, stack. It's longer, more comprehensive, and its basis it's basically the basis on which the investors will make their decisions. Because you will not have a prospectus like you have when you buy a house. You will not have a memorandum uh, signed by lawyers and auditors uh, when there is an IPO and you buy shares. Uh, or when uh, North Hydro issues new shares, there will be a memorandum, uh, lawyers sign, uh, auditors sign. No. 
the only formal kind of prospect you have from the startups is the presentation of the investor deck. And that will probably follow the, the share purchase agreement you hopefully will sign, but that's it. So test it, find out is this true, is it correct, does it hold, evaluate. But for, before you evaluate, in, evaluate, investigate and explore. Use your network, Google, check, competition, ask around, ask the family. But also ask yourself, is this something, if it was there, available right now, would I purchase? Would I purchase at that price? Will I, can I think of myself, my company or my family or friends as possible? customers? If not, find out why. If, and you get excited, so I want this, okay, go for it, check it, but maintain discipline. There are several steps we're going through here. We should also evaluate, and uh, you have handed out a form, which is the first attempt, no, it's not an attempt, you will evaluate, you will rank, you will give give points to, to, to companies based on what you have experienced hearing the pitch and the discussions you will have at the tables here. They're short, yes, but that's how it is out there. People who invest uh, in, in, in Y Combinator companies or startup lab companies, they don't have much more time than this. They have to make a decision based on more or less the same processes that you experience right now or in 20 minutes or so. Be patient though, take your time, because judgment can change. Uh, there are people around these tables that has not yet found out how they can explain what they do. And I still don't know why they're geniuses and uh, really great companies. It's my job to try to find out, it's your job to try to find out. Uh, some companies have founders that just consider uh, investors as idiots, and maybe we are, but we are the buying idiots. We are the idiots you companies have to sell to. And to the investors, I have seen almost all of us through all the programs I've been through, and it's been a few, not only here, but Itza, Stavanger, Trondheim, uh, Startup Lab, and so forth. Priorities among you investors change over time. Uh, in Startup, lab once, a company that everybody hated because two founders, geniuses, that considered all investors idiots. All of a sudden they got it. We have to treat the investors as buyers because if you can sell to a customer, if you can grab a customer, convince a customer that I shall buy your product, you can probably also uh, convince the investors because we're human beings, right? Professional investors don't have a soul, but except for that, <laughs> they think like customers. You have to sell your product, your team, everything. So be patient, this is for the investors. Then we will negotiate and agree on possible terms. There will be processes, procedures, guidelines for everything that will be presented and, and, and kind of educated in, uh, gone through in detail. When we come to that, that's week five? Six. Week six, <laughs> okay. Uh, so check the startups, do the job, and start to prepare for a possible due diligence where you really go in and check what they have presented in their uh, uh, investor deck, investment deck is that true? Does it hold water? What is the market really out there? Do they understand the competitive landscape? Are they able to sell? Where are the holes in the team? How can that be filled? Can I, can I help? Do I or my network as an investor have access to people, competence, knowledge that can help this company succeed? Then Investors start to form groups. We want to see lead investors step forward and say, okay, I like this company. I'm excited. I've done the job so far. Uh, I've checked this out. It looks good. I want to see if we can form a group of, of, of 
uh, investors, form a syndicate, uh, and do the investment process. Then it's down to week nine. nine. <laughs> and again, for all this, we have Angel Challenge, how processes, procedures, guidelines. Uh, we will also be there as individuals. I will be there, Knut will be there, Maya will be there, uh, Virginia and the uh, others will be here to, to help and, and answer questions and uh, provide tools and templates and everything you hopefully need to make this process as professional as possible. And quite up to the level, you will see all other places, including the two famous accelerators in the US I mentioned. And while doing this, we should continue to share, contribute, enjoy, criticize, suggest, and have fun. At least that's the plan. So investing is about very much now it's a bit more theoretical. It's about managing risk. Because a direct investment in a company is high risk. It's not buying a car. It's not, even though a car can be complicated, especially these days, should it be electric, should it be hybrid, should it be this and that, uh, or buying a house, should it be there, should it be a flat, should it be uh, on the west side, the east side, outside of all side, whatever. The risk is low. It's not low. It's the highest risk you can take in early stage investing. And a good investment process, like the ones we will hopefully take you through, uh, will help reduce this, the risk, but it cannot avoid it, because it's there. It's supposed to be there. And also, reduced risk create a value. So if a company with the help of maybe you as an investor, is able to take away a lot of the market risk by signing up possible partners or, or, or uh, cornerstone customers, that reduces risk and increases value for the company, for you as an initial investor. Types of risk, technical is the most commonly understood. Will it work? When I press the button and say start, does it work? Will it do what it's supposed to do? Will it do what it's supposed to do also when 20,000 people log in at the same time? You have to find out before 20,000 people log in at the same time. And that's also some of the processes that are that's happening right now. And that we can, as investors and program managers, help. Market risk, is there actually a market out there? Yes, you've been speaking to people who say they like it, but have you really forced anyone to put money on the table to, to test your product, to use your product? Or at least to put in their own resources so it costs them a little, just to say in an interview, yeah, 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 this is fantastic, I'll buy it. That's not a commitment. Putting resources, including money on the table, that's that's serious. That's good. The team, the team is a risk. Will the team hold? Are they friends? Uh, how complete is the team? No team in early stage is complete. If it was, it wasn't early stage. Then it was something uh, that is uh, almost ready for uh, the stock market. So that don't expect to find a complete team, but where are the holes? Do the present team understand that there is a hole here? There is a weak net on the marketing side? Or do they think they can do everything self, themselves because they are geniuses? Uh, also, what kind of agreement clauses do you need to protect yourself so that the team stays within the company? Don't run off with the money? Or all of a sudden you invested in a team or two and now you have a team of one and a competitor with the same technology? Stuff like that. Financial risk. Will they, how long will the investment take them? If it's, let's say, 900,000, 1.2 million, what milestones will they reach? What do they promise you to do with that money? Because if your money is just a tiny drop in a huge ocean of necessary financial means to even get the product ready. Uh-uh. Maybe you should wait. 
and you have nothing to measure on, no metrics to measure on, because product uh, plan can also be uh, measured, and a financial plan could be measured. How much money will they spend? How much money will they need? Until they have proved themselves. And don't forget the political risk. Ah, uh, oh, no, we, we will invest in Norway, so there is no political risk. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. I'm personally invested in a company in Stavanger that uh, sells to uh, the social sector, uh, and they've been caught by political risk. So we have to change the, the incorporation of that company and uh, have to make it onto a non-profit company in order to be allowed to sell the product. Because the customer is NAV, NAV. So you cannot sell uh, any shares with a profit, you cannot uh, pay profit out to the company. So there is a regulatory and or political risk that you have to think of. There are companies around the floor here that should think about that, and actually I think they have done so because I asked last time. So, any learnings? Uh, there's a lot of senior or experienced investors that consider the team the most critical factor, not the technology. Uh, timing is extremely important and extremely difficult to judge. That's where I've made my most expensive mistakes, and some of them has been quite quite expensive. And normally in, in, in Norway, in the Norwegian market, companies are too early. They think the market is there, but it isn't. And it's expensive to give it the full speed ahead, and the market is now there. But if you find out early enough that, uh uh, uh we have to wait it out here, you can do it in a much more uh, capital efficient way. Tread water, bootstrap, while you watch the market and maintain the myth around your company and speak at uh, professional gatherings and never, never talk to the press or the TV because it's too early. You only create hype and you will die. And others will pick up and come later. That's my I've done that four times. I'm not proud of it, but it's happened, and it was expensive and frustrating. Uh, startups do the formalities right from the beginning. That means that you have to have all the formalities, the paper work in shape. We sold a company, I did, to, through, in alliance to Oracle. The deal was closed right before Easter. And uh, we had a law company spending all Easter copying, PDFing documents for the data room for Oracle. Extremely costly, extremely uh, frustrating, and potentially dangerous for the whole deal. Get it right from the beginning, even if you hate it. We hate it too. But do it right. If you plan to fail, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares if you have your paperwork correct, if you fail. But if you succeed and your company starts to look like something that will soon be valued, 100 million kroner, 200, 500, a, a billion kroner, people will start to get ugly. I remember clearly that I did some work for that company. I have created some of their IP. People pop up from under rocks and so forth. They, you have to have the correct agreements with all consultants, even the friends of your sister who worked there as interns during summer. And all of these agreements are easily available, uh, high quality, on the net, or from us, or from others. Just, you have to do it, and you have to do it now. And investors, you have to check that I have done it now, or in week six. week six. Involvement, it's not your company, but maybe you, when you invested, you have something to, to contribute anyway. 
but you are not the owner and manager of that company even though you've invested some money in it. Have uh, you heard of, uh, the expression a bear hug? It's, it's positively meant from the bear, but unfortunately it, it, it breaks all your ribs. You die. So we're not here to suffocate the, the, the startups in difficult, time-consuming and frustrating uh, due diligence but we have to do the check. There will be excitement, I hope. There are companies here that uh, I have no problems at all seeing myself as a customer or why wasn't this around when, period, period, period. There are companies here that do stuff that if they succeed, yeah, Great. So I hope to see excitement from you investors and I hope that we will provide the tools to uh, discipline that excitement into a good investment process. But still there will be disappointments, we will make mistakes. Uh, I'm pretty sure we will do that. And to Avoid being wrong is impossible, right? If I knew how to pick out the absolute winners among a group of 20 startups, I wouldn't stand here and talk. I wouldn't be here at all. I would, or if I was here, I would be bullshitting you and lying to you to confuse you so that I could pick the right companies in peace and quiet. Nobody knows. Even the most experienced and smartest investors make mistakes all the time. So will you do. But experience can help. Experience can also make you too certain and unwilling to see new possibilities. So it could be a small question mark there. Avoiding echo chambers can be smart. People that when you start to sit together and say, this is a stupid idea, why is he here at all or she? Ah, if you don't understand it, give it a chance at least. Uh, and also check outside the echo chamber, at home, with others, talk to a friend. Is this as stupid as I think or is this as great as I think? And you say, great, haven't you heard? This is already done in Fredrikstad or somewhere else. Research and hard work of all kinds can help or can they? At a certain point the more you dive and drill and dig the more confused you get. I think. So you have to kind of find out okay this is how deep I will go. We can check with other people that has deeper knowledge, but at a certain point, stop digging and retract. Helicopter view, will I do it or won't I? Not getting excited at all helps. Always be grumpy and skeptical, but is that fun? No, not fun for the investors, not for the, for the startups and founders. You can be a constant skeptic, but then you will miss the great opportunities, won't you? Because you make it a profession not to believe in anything. Just go there and wait for the right thing to pop up. Maybe it's there already. Maybe it's in this room already. And there's a lots of factors totally out of your control. Regardless, it's still a gamble and you will not win them all. At all. That's wrong. You will not win them all at all. But perhaps we can avoid the most stupid and unnecessary mistakes. Uh, some of you have quite a heavy experience and others not so much, but you all have relevant knowledge and this is to you investors and experience that can be a great value to the companies here and help them grow and make them into good investments. 
You may not understand everything in the company, but if you understood everything, you shouldn't be an investor. You should own the company and work there. You have relevant networks too, don't you? All of you have. And relevant doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything about boards and board marketing, but uh, you know people that has op opinions on this product, that product, Yoda Care, Rust, uh, and all the others. And also, you're not here by chance. You are here because you have an interest to pursue, you want to check this out, you want to learn something, and uh, the program will help you put this in perspective, provide processes, tools, guidelines, and guidance too from us and others for how good investments can be done now through the program and hopefully to continue. Do we have 10 minutes or five minutes more? Okay. So, uh, a little bit of feelings from, from looking back from my side. What should you ask in addition to what will be provided through the forums and everything? Do you actually know your market, Mr. Founder, Mr. Entrepreneur? Or do you just believe you know it? Do you have a clear go-to market plan? How are you going to get your product or service in front of the right customers? How can that scale so that if it's the right product in the right market, you can deliver? Because if you cannot deliver, you have a product fit, product market fit, and you can't deliver, you're just paving snow for somebody else to take you over. Don't do that. Can you sell? Are you willing to sell? It's not such that the best person on the podium or uh, addressing a customer is the guy who, or girl, who is uh, the best salesperson. I worked in Cisco in the 90s. We sold the first IP network to, to Telenor. And basically it was sold by an ex-Telenor employee uh, who was a systems engineer. And if you called him a salesperson, he would hit you, physically. That was an insult to him, but he sold it, period. Refused to take the bonus uh, in the beginning, but after a while he, he took the bonus too, because he sold it. Are you coachable? Are you willing to take advice at all? At least if you're not, we should know, as investors and as program managers. I will do this regardless, because you know. Uh, are you able to focus and keep things simple? Or is it just getting more, the more questions you get, the more complicated your product and service and marketing and everything gets? Or is it possible to narrow it in and, and, and find a solution that people understand? even the idiots that are going to buy it. The typical Norwegian uh, reaction to difficult questions that, yes, I like this product, but it should also be able to do this and that, and it should also have this and that, and you go back to the lab and continue your research and, and development work, because that's the most comfortable thing to do. Uh, he, people here, not the foreigners, they probably know a guy called Petter Stordalen, uh, I'm not a huge fan, but uh, he has some qualities. And his father uh, grew vegetables and berries and had a slogan, you have to sell the strawberry you have. Get rid of them regardless, and then you have a business. <laughs>